All right. Good morning, everybody. Um, welcome to another uh, installment of our CASP SIG uh, for RNA structure. Um, so today we're going to hear from Kathy uh, Lawson about the wonderful NAKB. Um, for kind of scheduling, uh, we will have in two weeks another lecture um, by Miroslav Krepu. Hopefully I announced that okay, um, on some molecular dynamics of RNA and RNA protein complexes. Um, and then we'll actually be taking kind of a month break for a winter break. Um, so then we'll be back in January. Um, so we'll see you guys again, 5 December, and then it will be, uh, I believe that comes out to be January 16th when we'll be back. All right. Uh, so to oh, oh, sorry, Chair, you... maybe before we start, because now I recall okay. that... Uh... Maybe some of you noticed that I think in our newsletter or the invitation will try to add a job section. I don't. I want to keep it like compact at the end of our invitation. So I think we'll not necessarily write every single offer to everyone, but I think you can send it to me and then I will compile it into something compact and I will put it at the end of our invitations and, and maybe then yeah, every second week will send out the uh, like job offers, postdocs, industry, whatever you want, I think. And yeah, we'll see uh, if this works or not and we can we can think how to make it better. So yeah, one more thing. Yep, thanks. Yep, great opportunity to, to spread the word. Um, all right, so back to introducing uh, Dr. Kathy Lawson. Uh, she's been a structural, one of the structural biologists um, for over four decades now uh, in both governmental and academic uh, research. Um, she did her graduate training out in the University of Chicago and then postdoc out in the University of Groningen, um, where then she started a research group in, in Brookhaven National Lab. Um, then uh, kind of at the, the turn of the century, she moved to Rutgers where she uh, you know, has now uh, contributed a lot to uh, the protein data bank, which um, is uh, a wonderful collaborative network of structures that I don't think any of us could do our work without. Um, and she's also been heavily uh, involved in the EMDB for uh, cryo-EM deposition. Uh, and kind of in the past few years, she's been uh, up in Vermont working on this really cool uh, nucleic acid knowledge database. So today she'll be sharing with us uh, all of that work that she's been doing that hopefully will be very useful and instrumental to this community. All right, go ahead, take it away, Kathy. Great, thank you so much, Rachel. And thank you, Martian, uh, for, uh, I guess, creating this um, very special uh, resource the, to allow people around the world to um, give lectures in this in this new, new way of doing things. <laughs> So, um, yeah, so I'm going to be talking about the Nucleic Acid Knowledge Base, uh, which is a data resource that I've been working on, as Rachel said, for the past couple of years. Uh, and let's see. Ooh, let's see. Okay. And I just want to start uh, by mentioning that later on in my talk, um, I imagine there will be time, but I will attempt a live demo of the website. And uh, so I, I just wanted to put out there that if uh, the audience has particular suggestions that, you know, things they want to see demoed, searching for particular kinds of things, you can add uh, to the chat. And uh, I'll ask Rachel and Martian to um, moderate those suggestions uh, when I get to that point. So, um, all right, so I was, I started getting involved in the NDB and I guess the mid uh, 2010s, uh, but it had been around for quite a while. Uh, it was founded at Rutgers by um, my uh, longtime collaborator and colleague Helen Berman, as well as Wilma Olson and David Beveridge. Um, it offered NA specific or new 
I use NA short for nucleic acid specific annotations and search. It focused on only X-ray and NMR structures from the protein data bank, but it also included uh, early X-ray structures, these dinucleotide structures that had not been, um, I guess, added to PDB, uh, but were available in or and are available in the Cambridge Structural Database. Uh, this resource, uh, I worked. Uh, for uh, quite a bit of time. Uh, I did a lot of the annotations um, after I started working with them, uh, working on that project, uh, but it is now retired because we now have a fully functional nucleic acid knowledge base. And how that came about was we were we succeeded in um, obtaining an NIH funded um, collaboration between uh, the Bowling Green people. At the time, it was Neocles Leontis and Craig Zerbel. Uh, unfortunately, Neocles passed, and so we've been working uh, very closely with Craig Zerbel. Uh, and at Rutgers, myself, Helen Berman, and Brenda Vallet, and Lee Chen. Uh, and our goal was, uh, well, in, in, you know, we, we wanted to retire NDB, and so it had to be at least as good, and we wanted it to be better, of course. Uh, we wanted more complete uh, annotations available uh, than we offered in NDB. We wanted to include cryoEM structures because those had been excluded from NDB. And we wanted to be able to aggregate annotations from external resources. Uh, and we wanted a, a, you know, a faster search than NDB had available and, you know, good reporting and data displays. And because of the fact that I had actually uh, developed the EM data, the current EM data resource website, um, I had a lot of, uh, I guess, experience uh, in figuring out how to actually implement um, such things. So, uh, so we had um, a beta version of NAKB available already in July of last year, and in May of this year, we um, we made it. We declared it to be fully functional. It's updated weekly on Thursdays, which is one day after PDB updates uh, every week. So every week we we get the new PDB structures delivered to NIKB just one day later. And this is uh, the home page, what the home page looks like. And we have a, you know, a navigation menu over here on the left. Uh, when you click on the NIKB icon, it'll always bring you back to home. We have a, a bar up here, which gives you uh, a it's a status bar. It tells you uh, what the update date. Um, it's actually it was is the PDB update date, and it tells you how many structures are available in NAKB, and it also tells you uh, what version of the RNA equivalence classes that we pulled from BGSU are available. Uh, we have a, a little welcome page, and I want to note that we actually have. Um, online advance of publication, uh, uh, the January 2024 edition of the uh, Nucleic Acids Research Database issue will include uh, a publication uh, describing NAKB. And uh, then I also wanna point over here, we have, we have a carousel um, because this is a screenshot, it won't move forward, but uh, you know, every couple seconds, it'll bring up uh, another recent re recently released entry. Um, and if you click on where it says all released entries, it'll give you the, the whole list. Uh, I did that for personal reasons uh, or or very, the very important thing is every week we get, um, I have to prepare and 
and sometimes update annotations. So it's very useful to, to just have that list available. Um, so the uh, NAKB annotations for this particular entry, for instance, uh, are the this pro where it says protein RNA. We highlight what the um, what the polymer what polymer types are in the entry. Uh, in this case, there was an A form double helix and helicase. And I'm very pleased to say that those were annotations were generated automatically. <laughs> and I didn't actually have to to do to say to uh, do anything manually for that. I'll I'll describe that in a minute. Uh, so what are the data resources we use? Well, we heavily use uh, RCSB PDB. They offer a data API that um, we make use of. Um, and so there's, from the RCSB PDB, we get all kinds of basic information and, and also then mappings to uh, some of their uh, resources like the Chemical Component Dictionary, a Biologically Interesting Reference Dictionary, and then also Unipro, EMDB, BMRB, Biomag Research, um, so the NMR uh, database, PubMed, DOI. Um, the RNA equivalence classes from BGSU uh, to NATCO from our, our collaborators and colleagues in the Czech Republic, um, Bodan Schneider and Yuri Cherny. Um, uh, on Quadro and, and uh, G4 DSSR are two different resources that annotate um, quadruplex structures. Uh, we have RNA Central and RFAM that annotate uh, RNA strands um, or RNA structures. We have 3D footprint and DNA ProDB, which are um, both offer um, protein DNA interaction. Um, and then we have Panther, which annotates proteins. Um, we're certainly open to ideas for adding other annotations. This is just our initial, initial list to get started. Um, so this is the the full data preparation pipeline. Uh, it's a little, um, just to break it down a little bit. So we have, the, we have a structural analysis path, a metadata aggregation path. We use um, external software. Um, we, we use X3DNA DSSR to, um, to create um, parameters for analysis. We use RNA View, which is a program we just recently updated to be. Um, it, it it was it is a program from from Rutgers from NDB from many years ago, and it now will read MMSIF files in addition to PDB files. Um, and we use a, a sequence cluster analysis uh, CD hit software. Um, and so this shows you where we, we make use of the RCSB PDB resources. As I say, that's a very important part of NAKB. And we also actually make use of um, RCSB, some RCSB PDB resources in the back end. Um, and uh, the CD hit sequence cluster analysis uh, has been very important for actually improving how we make annotations um, because if a if we have already have annotations available for a particular sequence cluster and it's very clear um, that a new entry belongs to that cluster we automatically add that annotation and we also have a very conservative um, or I would say a pretty conservative uh, analysis, program that we we read the uh, DSSR output. And if it's very clear that it's a double helix, it will be annotated as a double helix, et cetera. So let's see. Um, 
And then I just wanted to point out about um, data organization. It's a, in a way, it's a technical detail, but it is something um, that is important to think about as you're building a data resource. What are, what are you actually tagging with um, your annotations? Uh, and for NAKB, these are the, the important ones that you have to think about. So uh, you have an entry level data um, where you, for instance, will have the experimental method, the pub, your, your citation information. Uh, we add a polymer composition, and I just want to point out that you know you would think that might not be too um, difficult to do, but sometimes there are PDB entries of our ribosomes that only have RNA <laughs> uh, modeled, and but those are still called protein RNA in NAKB. Uh, as long as we catch that, uh, that has to be, it has to be caught manually, unfortunately. But there there aren't too many of them, uh, and so NATCO scores another example of an entry level um, or their summary scores <coughs> that we pull in. Um, <clears throat> we do a lot with polymer entity. Uh, level annotations. And so it will either be, you know, a protein or a nucleic acid component. So the entity is defining the, the chemical entity, but not the instance. So you have chain individual chains, which are each instance. So here I show here um, my one of my favorite examples, um, an old structure that I worked on of uh, trip repressor uh, DNA duplex where the structure that is deposited is actually two separate uh, assemblies of a dimer and a DNA duplex. Um, and the polymer entity, the, the trip repressor, you can see all the copies are here and here's just one chain. Now in this particular structure, there are two defined assemblies uh, and Here's the important point is for base pair and secondary structure analysis. We look at the assemblies and not the entries because um, it's the assembly that that is the important, we consider the important thing to be able to annotate in terms of analyzing the secondary structure analysis. Um, you know, sometimes the the structure or the asymmetric unit will only contain one strand of DNA or one strand of RNA. And to actually generate the assembly, you have to apply symmetry. And so that's why, you know, so you have all these, um, so the entry gives you all the unique structural information, but it's important for annotating structures to, to actually look at the, at the assemblies. And so I just wanted to make that clear because uh, that's when you when we go through the and look at NAKB, you will see that we have these different um, types of information available. So one of the first tools that I, I worked on was, was one that allows you to auto-generate uh, charts of this type um, because it's important um, to just be able to look at trends. Uh, so one of the ways you can look at trends here is um, by the experimental method. And one the interesting thing that uh, you can you can see here is you have you know X-ray um, has contributed many entries over the years. Uh, and, and does seem to be, you know, continuing to be in use. Um, oh, gee. All right. So, um, and NMR has, has also, you know, contributed every year, um, some entries. Uh, but since we've added the cryo-EM structures, you can see that just uh, there's a, a lot of increased use of it. And as, just as of last year, EM actually um, had more structures than X-ray, so that's a uh, a new a new thing. 
and I expect it will will continue uh, because EM is is extremely valuable for looking, especially at uh, you know ribosomal structures, which there are a lot of. Uh, so another way you can look in the custom chart tool is the polymer composition, and by polymer composition you can see that we have um, I guess the most uh, or the most popular type is protein DNA. And actually, I think the most popular type of protein DNA complex are these transfer, transcription factor complexes. Of course, there are a lot of enzyme DNA complexes. Uh, and of course, we have many different DNA uh, polymer complexes, only DNA. Uh, Protein RNA is the second most popular uh, composition, uh, not surprisingly. Uh, and then RNA alone is comes in as number four. Uh, protein with DNA and RNA is, is um, the fifth. Uh, and I show here, I just love this. Um, these structures that are coming out of EM now, where you can actually see a transcribing polymerase with the nucleosome. Yeah, just uh, uh, just the the kind of knowledge that you can get from uh, these structure these novel structures coming out. It just blows my mind. <laughs> uh, all right, so. Annotation. So uh, in NDB, we had actually gone through, I guess, a number of different times and tried to, um, I guess, narrow down how we wanted to annotate these structures. Um, we do, an we annotate by the entity, either the protein entity or the nucleic acid entity. Uh, and we have, um, for nucleic acids, we have functional annotations and we have structural annotations. And for proteins, we have functional annotations. Um, and in NDB, we just basically gave each entity or sometimes structure a, a particular term and it was a tag. And what I wanted to do uh, to make an improvement for NAKB was actually create a hierarchical dictionary structure, uh, which has been incorporated in NAKB, uh, so that so that you can, um, if you tag something as a polymerase, then it's also a transferase and an enzyme, right? So uh, you get all of those tags that come together by by calling it a polymerase, for instance. Um, and if it's a uh, you know ribosomal RNA, then it's also involved in protein synthesis, and it's also um, you know has a functional a nucleic acid with a functional role. Um, so we have a a tool which I I do hope I will have time to um, to demo which which allows you to, to navigate through these annotations and look at them uh, and, and, and obtain uh, lists of entries, for instance. So if you click on these numbers, it'll take you to the list of uh, entries that have that tag. All right, then uh, this was, this is basically in case my demo doesn't work well, but um, just as, as an example of a full search. So if you go to the full search page, this is what you see. You see a number of options for uh, you know, ways you can um, divide up the, the full set of structures available. When you start, you have all the entries available. So all of them are shown uh, by default, only the first 20 are listed, you can change that, and you can also change the way you sort um, the entries. Um, you have really, it's release date by default, but you can change it 
uh, for instance, to the deposited molecular weight, which I find very useful. If you say you want to just look at smaller structures or you only want to look at bigger structures. Uh, so once you select RNA, once you click, then it's automatically updated. The list is updated. Uh, so you see here now you have um, just a little bit more than 6,000 structures. Uh, now you say you want to also include protein. And so now we have all, only structures that are protein and RNA, and that reduces our count a little bit more. Uh, now I've decided I only want to look at those that um, use the EM method. And so that about half the structures. And then uh, there's a, a fairly long list of features available. So here, um, so ribozyme or DNA zyme, is, that's one of the annotations that, that we do in NAKV. So now we're down to only 21 structures. Uh, now, so if you actually want to work with the set of structures that you have obtained, um, I recommend that you click on this view download as tabular report. I realized uh, recently that I this, this is not the report from that, what I just showed you before. It's from a different search, but um, just to, this just gives you an idea of, of what you find. So uh, this is the report page. There are different report types um, that you can choose. Short status method, polymer components. And then you can get uh, lists of um, geometry if, if that is what is of interest to you for, for all the entries that are um, part of, the, of your search result. And you can, there are many different options for what you can have in your columns. Um, and yeah, I'd love to demo that too, because um, it's a, a little bit limited, but you can also, so you can uh, download in various formats and just download the IDs. Um, there are many, many different options and I, I hope we, provided um, you know, options that people are interested in. If people are interested in options that you don't see, um, please just let us know. <laughs> uh, this is an example of uh, an individual entry atlas page, uh, just the top part. Um, so we have at the top the NAKV logo that would take you to the home page. Uh, we tell you, um, then it shows the um, polymer composition. And this is will actually take you to the RCSV PDBs page. If you, if you click on this uh, PDB here, we have um, a menu of, of different options. As, uh, you can view using Molestar uh, if you click on this. And so here we have our basic information. Um, as I have mentioned before, most of this comes from PDB. Uh, and then uh, we have the ability, any, if any analysis that is available for the particular entry will be listed here. So we have, uh, we offer a DSSR analysis page. So that's, it's blue because it's an internal thing. And it, NATCO um, offers an analysis of this structure and it's red or dark, or dark red, brick red, um, because it will take you to NATCO's page. Uh, so we have NA annotations. It's a B form double helix. Actually, if you if you click on this, you can actually get to a list of all the structures that have that annotation, if that is something you're interested in doing. And the same with the protein annotations. Because this is such a large complex, there's a there's a whole heck of a lot of them. And some of them are actually NAKB and others are from uh, Panther. So 
when you have both panther and NAKD protein annotations. Uh, oh, and then um, you can quickly get to uh, any particular ID page by this nakd.org slash atlas equals ID. And you can use either the PDB or the NDB ID. NDB uh, for a while gave their own independent IDs and we're, um, we've kept those available, um, you know, in case people come across publications where the NDB ID is listed, you can still find it uh, by that ID. Uh, so uh, this is uh, all the tools that are available. Um, I didn't show the table views. Um, I, I can maybe demo that, the tree views, uh, which I alluded to, custom charts. And this is a uh, external resources. Um, we took all of the external resources that were available on NDB. We looked at the um, NAR list. We, we tried to make, so we have a list of, I think, 57 uh, total at the moment. Uh, we would welcome any corrections or additions uh, from the community. Uh, and so, yeah, so we wanted to have a page that would be equivalent to what NDB had offered to just provide information about uh, external resources that, that are available. And you can filter, uh, you can sort, um, so you, if you type in anything, any word here, it will just filter um, and hopefully find what, what you're looking for. Um, so we also endeavored to uh, create some education and standards. Um, I'll just show you. It's pretty simple and maybe in the future we'll, we'll extend it a little bit. Um, but this is, for instance, our introduction to nucleic acids, where we just have little tabs for DNA, RNA, base pairs. And I'm showing here the tab for uh, the different forms. And we, we offer the ability to download a basic A form, B form, or Z form model. That was a, a request from a user um, some time ago. We also offer on this, as far as education, there's an RNA-based pair catalog. That was a, uh, that's something that uh, was a collaboration with, that was originally part of NDB uh, that was created by our BGSU uh, collaborators and, and we have incorporated it here as well. So you can still access it. Um, we have, we, regularly look at our CSB PDB molecules of the month and anytime they have something that is nucleic acid re related, we, we add it to the list of um, offerings that we, we put on this page. Uh, RNA Journal has been, uh, I guess, offered us the opportunity or is one way to look at it, but they, they have uh, benefited from our interest in creating uh, cover images. We've done that with them for a couple of years. Um, so you can look at that. And I think from each of those um, cover images, you can you can link back to the to the structure uh, page that was generated. And uh, a little bit more um, Afar, uh, there is a music atlas page. Um, so some people, and Helen Berman had some uh, students who were interested in, in seeing what kind of musical compositions you can make with uh, nucleic acid sequences. That was part of NDB and we have um, migrated it to NADB. So how am I doing time-wise? Uh, yeah, I think we'll have time for uh, the demo. Um, oh yes, and so then now on the standards menu, we have uh, 
again, we have migrated all the information from NDB about the valence geometry um, and ideal geometry. And I want to point out, some of you may know this. Um, hopefully, there are some of the people who are involved in the valence geometry working group are on the call. Um, but this has been in the works for a few years um, to create an update of the um, ideal, well, so the, the bond, bond distances and angles uh, that should be used for refinement and, um, and for validation. And a, a white paper is being worked on uh, and hopefully that will be um, forthcoming soon. And I'll also mention that uh, there's a separate committee um, that has begin, been beginning to looking to look at base pairing definitions. And so that is um, something in the future that will um, that you you can look for. Uh, all right, so I, this is close to the close to the end. Um, I, you know, as, as I mentioned, we have a an online article in advance of publication at the moment. Um, will be published in January uh, at Rutgers. Uh, Helen has been a huge help uh, with her knowledge and experience. Uh, Brenda Vallat uh, has my been my close colleague uh, in helping to. Uh, uh, to test and validate all the um, all the the tools that I've generated, uh, Lee Chen has been she had been involved in NDB and played a, a tremendous role in helping to to move a lot of the the data from the old to the new system. Um, Craig uh, is our current. Uh, NIHPI, uh, and originally it was Neocles, but unfortunately he passed in December of 2020. Uh, but we we owe him a debt of gratitude for all his enthusiasm and uh, knowledge as well. And I want I have there's a quite a few other people uh, who have contributed in one way or another, um, help helping us to figure out how to interact with other um, data resources. And the RCSB PDB team has offered us, um, with, they, they actually do our server hosting and, uh, and provide technical support. Uh, let's see. And then uh, as I meant, as, as Rachel mentioned, I think uh, I've been doing all this work uh, at, since most of this work since moving to Vermont, and um, this is this is where I get my best ideas. Uh, not not sitting in front of the computer, but out walking in the woods. <laughs> All right, so um, change the. Let's see. I think that's probably a good size. So I'll, I'll just start with a, a little bit of a demo, um, just things I'm interested in showing. And then, um, you know, if there are particular questions, we can look at them. Um, so let's actually, let's see. Uh, so I'm going to share with you about these annotation trees. Um, so as I mentioned, we have- I think we're still looking at your slides. I think maybe it didn't change over. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> maybe yeah. you shared the, the tab instead of the whole screen. Thank you for, thank you yeah. for pointing that out. All right, well, actually, so maybe that, that's, that makes it a little easier. So now I'm just gonna share the browser. You're good now, we can see. Okay. Any KB right. website. All right. So going back, um, yeah, so there's the home page. And I'm going to show you uh, first about these annotation trees. Um, I guess I'm, I'm proud of these because in 
I guess it's the, the most sophisticated JavaScript coding. <laughs> so, you know, um, Rachel mentioned my, my background is more about doing, you know, actually collecting and um, solving structures than, than doing programming. But, you know, you, you learn what you need to know to do the job. And uh, I actually had to learn to do a little recursive JavaScript coding <laughs> for this, which was kind of fun. Uh, so for nucleic acids, um, we have, you know, function and structure uh, annotations. And if I just show you all of them, um, you know, so they fall into protein synthesis, there's catalytic, there's ribose switches, there's aptamers, and we came up with these categories of translation regulating, transcription regulating, post-transcriptional processing, replication reg regulating. Um, so there is, there's a, quite a few classes uh, and then in terms of structure, we offer double helix, parallel helix, triple helix, quadruplex, multiplex, holiday junctions. Um, we have a few features that we offer. We ho hopefully will expand them and then designed assembly, which is an interesting category of um, structures that um, people are just building. Um, fancy different uh, assemblies uh, that they have designed synthetically. So um, Kathy, uh, can you explain, for example, here? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm following on my screen as well. Like when I clicked uh, triple helix, I see yeah, triple helices here. Mm -hmm. So how, how this uh, distinguish or how this class was uh, annotated? Uh, for triple helix, that is, uh, that is generated Oh, okay. So I'll just, yeah. So this one is um, in part, it's, well, it's actually generated by um, automatically. Uh, I, and I'll, I'll just take you down the little pathway um, for this, you know, so for this mm -hmm. one particular yeah. example. So we offer the, the DSSR. And as I mentioned, this is, so this is the assembly, right? And it, it turns out this particular yeah. structure has three different assemblies. Um, but if it, as long as it has, and I don't remember what the, the rule offhand was, but if it has, you know, some number of multi, multiplets uh, that DSSR detects that have okay, yeah, three nucleotides <laughs> then it then it will um will call it a triple helix um, ah, okay okay yeah, and it, what we are on this page because there is a question and i think it's very related to this kind of annotation so the question is is it possible to download x3 dna dssr annotations of the base pair of, for a bunch of rna structures or for the entire NAKB uh, via some kind of IPI. So the question is, yeah, to if it's possible to download all annotations at once. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. So it's um, yeah. So that's that's an interesting point. Um, so we have the capability. Um, so if, so if we go here, you can get all of the um let's say, let's say if you just wanted the base pair information, um, you get, in this particular case, you're gonna get a little bit of a, a warning here <laughs> uh, because you do have to keep in mind that if you have, um, especially if you're including, including EM structures, uh, you're gonna get, uh, you know, some low resolution structures and the, you know, detailed annotations like, you know, torsion angles may, may not actually be that meaningful for lower resolution. Uh, but this, um, for instance, will, will give you um, all of the base pairing for, so you see here there's, uh, 
and you can download it as a CSV. I don't actually have the cap I don't actually have the function that will, will allow you to download every base pair for the whole NAKB at the moment. But that but it's an interesting idea we could think about how to do that. What we do offer currently is downloads. Uh, you can get the full accession list. You can get all the NAKB annotations. You can get um, all of the annotations that that NDB had. You know these aren't being updated anymore, and they're only for X-ray and NMR, uh, but they're still available. Um, you can download the the structures and of the let's say we call them. Uh, NDB and AKB only structures because they're not in the PDB. Um, and just to show you, so that this is uh, this is what I'm talking about. You know, a lot of dinucleotide structures with you know intercalations and um, pretty much all you know all X-ray, all high resolution. Um, oh, and then so another question. So is this, I, I believe the Cambridge database, it's not working. I mean, it does not exist anymore. So most of the structures are in PDB, I think, yes. And if you click on this historically impro important high resolution well, they, RNA crystal structure, it's like 550, 48 entries. So is this the whole uh, Cambridge? Oh, oh yeah, no. yeah. So oh. no, it's a it's a selected set uh, oh, okay. that had been curated in the in the past. We we haven't gone through and updated it. So it's it, they're all pretty much older entries. Um, if I go here, um, not that one. Let's see. There, there. It is actually possible to go for some of these. Uh, we do link to. I just have to find one that has maybe this one. Oh yeah, so see here, um, the CCDC um, actually offers, yeah, so the you, you can still access this structure through CCDC. Um, which takes a little while for connecting to well, there was a there was a 3D viewer in there. Well, I don't know. Um, it doesn't seem happy, but <laughs> um, yeah, okay. But I see, yeah, the database exists still exists, but yeah, it's focused more on like small molecules. So yeah, there's no more like there's no no new RNAs that will go to this database. Well, well, well here, well, here's an interesting thing is which is so there. I I think there are a fair number of structures that are newer. That, for instance, the valence geometry group uh, is is making use of for their upcoming improved uh, definitions for the valence geometry. We don't include them in NAKB at the moment, um, but you know, I guess in the in, that could be a future direction. Um, they could be included, but yeah. let's see. So just coming back here, um, it's a lot to look at. Um, we do offer the ability to look at um, just DNA, because then there, there are many fewer functional uh, categories for, for DNA. Um, but there are a few, uh, and then RNA only, uh, DNA plus RNA. Uh, so those are structures that have uh, both DNA and RNA in them. Uh, and then let's see, so just in principle, if you wanted to, to look at like aptamer, Hope this works. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah. So you can find all the um, 
all the tags that have the word aptamer in them. So if you're interested in aptamers, you know, you can go and look at that list. Um, for proteins, uh, so we have the, the three main branches are enzyme, regulatory, and structural. Um, that is how we annotated in NDB and you know, we, we just basically extended this for NAKB. Um, and uh, I'll point out here, we, we did quite a bit of work. Uh, Helen actually did a sabbatical project where she, I think, uh, where she was, was looking at how to annotate uh, different kinds of transcription factors. And she came up with this, this uh, method. It's, it's also, um, and it's, it's been incorporated in the, in Panther protein classes as well. I won't show you the, this, uh, tab, but, uh, just to show you, um, so we have, um, you know, so for instance, you can get, you know, here are all the structures that are uh, annotated as helix turn helix. And I think, did I? It's just sort of, I, I just, I love just spending time. <laughs> just, just gazing through all this. So, so th this is, um, so for the, the transcription factors, we have sort of the deepest levels of, of annotation um, currently in NAKB. You know, we, we can go deeper uh, for some of the others, um, but mostly, I guess, just to, just to get started, we wanted to make sure that we got the higher level annotations correct. Uh, and we can go deeper if there's, if there's interest, you know, in the community, for us to do to look at particular uh, categories, but so you can see here, you know, we have all these possibilities. You could you could click on this, and it will take you. It will show you all the structures that are involved in transcription. Okay, um, why don't we look at full search? Uh, so I showed you a little bit about this. Um, you know, you can click on any of these things. You know, so you can very quickly scan. Oh, and there's little hints here for some things that might not be clear. So a DNA plus RNA means that you know there's both DNA and RNA in the structure. Hybrid means that the DNA and the RNA is actually their nucleotides within the same polymer that are DNA and RNA, protein, nucleic acid. Um, we offer the capability to, um, you know, if you're only interested in looking at ligands that are, that are larger, um, and this is sort of an interesting case here where you have, I guess, four different RNA polymerases that happen to have some kind of a large ligand in them. Um, and I think there is a question related to ligands. Searching okay. for structures of RNAs bound to small ligands only. I tried to I tried the full search for RNA and ligands below 0.2, mm -hmm. but getting lots lots of proteins about complexes too. Do you have any suggestion to narrow down the results only to RNA and small ligands? I think yeah. That's okay, so I so think. RNA. Oh, oh, so small ligands, and if you want only R RNA and no protein, there's this protein oh, plus okay. minus. There you go, right? I hope this answered the question. Yeah. So, um, and a ligand is, it's interesting. It can either be annotated with the chemical component dictionary or this biologically interesting reference um, dictionary, depending. Um, uh, I'm kind of been going back and forth with my colleagues at PDB about how do you decide what, you know, 
what is re you know what it, what is actually included in in the this BIRD dictionary. Um, what through one thing that threw me for a loop was um, uh, so a, a lot of what is um, let me see so polymer like antibiotic structures. Oh, let me go back to um, reset. That's not gonna. Oh, this reset all filters very useful. <laughs> uh, and then let's look at sort of smaller structures. Yeah. So here. So this is an example of a structure that has um, a. So this is so this has a a bird ID, and and it, there's also. Um, something with a CCD ID as well, right? So it's sort of a, a complex that has peptide-like characteristics. Um, but I, I was mentioning that recently, uh, I guess some of the annotation staff were thinking about um, putting like cyclic a, you know, so nucle cyclic A nucleotides in, in this dictionary. And I just warned them that if they were going to do that, they need, that they needed to be consistent about it <laughs> because it uh, makes things more difficult for me if they, if they only have like some of the cyclic structures in bird and others and in other places. But um, yeah. So the you know the devil's always in the details for that. Um, are there other um, things that people would like for me to demo? Um, let me see. There's one more question. Uh, is it possible to download all the DNA or RNA torsion angle data? Right. Yes. So um, yeah. So I mentioned about that. So if you want the whole NAKB, I have to think about the. There's probably is a way I can come up with to do that. Right now, it's all stored in uh, backend CSV files, and I can probably there there may be a way to do that. Um, that will not be through the um, the report tables, but no, it's not a you can't do it now. But you can do it for like a, a set of structures, but not all of them. I, I, I'm, I appreciate the question. I'm going to actually write this down and think about how I can, how we can maybe do that. Um, okay. Just post it, post it in the chat that there is this uh, place when you can get this data, but it's yeah per, per entry. Yeah, so uh, you can get yeah. it per entry, right? So, um, yeah, so if we go here, um, yeah, so per entry, um, yeah, I, I, so we have here, for instance, uh, a heal, there's a single helix, and you can get all the nucleotide information. Um, just point out that if you, if you don't know what these are, then they're defined up here. Um, uh, so this statistics as for the for oh yeah for the for for the uh, first assembly. It's for like the, the yeah, yeah. In this case, there's a there's only one assembly because if there were additional assemblies, it would show. Oh, okay. Would, okay. Really yeah. useful. Um, there's sugars, that was a user request um, to have the sugar torsion information, um, base pairs. Again, if you're interested in what these are, we ha actually have, um, yeah, Zhang Zhe Lu was very nice to provide all these pictures <laughs> on from his website online and said, Feel free to use them, so we're using them. <laughs> uh, let's see. And base pair steps are available. Um, how useful they are for RNA structures, uh, many with complex 
folds, I don't know, but um, if they're calculated, you can get them. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, that's what we have for the nucleic acid parameters. Um, okay, do we have more questions from the audience? Yeah, uh, one other thing I might mention is, let's see, so uh, we have, um, so the RNA Central offers those, these R2DT diagrams, and we, hopefully this will work. Um, if you, yeah. So if you, if you're interested in these diagrams, um, if they if they are available from RNA Central, um, you can you can get them uh, from us. You know, just by we have a little page that um, includes their, uh, you know, where we just integrated their code to to show it. So, yeah. Any anything else? Yeah, no more questions. I will just I will just check. So there is this RNA view version on the GitHub of RCCB. And is this the one with updated support for MMC MMC files? I believe that's the place. Yes. So. Yes, we 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 had a yeah, we, we were we just updated it this week and there were a couple of hiccups, but um let's say by the end of this week it should be um working uh, as expected. But yeah, we, we've we've had it updated so that it will read in MMSIF files. Um, when it was, you know, when it was created in the 1990s, you know, PDB was the standard format. So it made sense. You know, we, we're not losing PDB um, support, but we're adding We've added MMSIF capability as well. So, all right, well, I'm gonna stop share. And um, if anybody has questions for NAKB, help at nakb.org will work. And again, I wanna thank the organizers for inviting me to um, talk about NAKB and give a demo. And thank you for your attention.